Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting for Monday, May 12th, 2014. It is a little past 7 o'clock, and I do call this meeting to order. Just a reminder that uh, we are filming the meeting tonight, so uh, just a heads up on that. Um, to start off, number one, an introduction, Mr. Chaplin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I wanted to just uh, give the board an opportunity to meet two guests that we're hosting in Arlington for the next two weeks as part of a cooperative program with the Mass Municipal Association and the State Department. Uh, we're hosting two municipal officials from Pakistan for the next two weeks, and where they're going to visit with town departments, uh, see the town, spend some time in the general area, uh, and I wanted to have them here to meet you tonight, and they will also get to witness town meeting tonight, so they're in for a, they're in for a long night. So if, uh, if, if you don't mind coming up, I'll, I'll introduce you to the board. I'm sorry, can you come to the microphone? My name is Ruksana Aziz, and I belong from Balochistan, that is the one state of Pakistan. And we are sharing border uh, with Afghanistan and Iran. Uh, and I'm working in education sector, and uh, uh, basically working uh, for Millennium Development Goal, in which including the universal primary education is the main goal, which we want to achieve till 2015, which is not looking so possible mm. Uh, due to uh, certain uh, condition, law and orders issues. So still we are very far behind to that goals. And uh, uh, I also worked on uh, women right and empowerment. And uh, beside that, main focus is uh, to involve the community in the education matters uh, in Pakistan. And uh, I'm covering, I'm working at a, a state level, and we have a 31 districts uh, in Balochistan, and we are focusing on all districts and build the capacity of education department officials and other line departments for achieving the goals of uh, universal primary education. Thank you. Great. Thank, well, you. thank you very much thank for being here. Welcome. Welcome. Hello everyone, I'm Salam Zafar. Um, I'm from um, the northern part of Pakistan, which is called Gilgit Baldistan, and we are sharing borders with China. And I'm working in uh, planning and development department uh, in Gilgit Baldistan. And I'm dealing with the infrastructure sector, and the road bridges and the buildings, everything. Great, thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Moving on, uh, for approval, the consent agenda. Minutes of meeting, uh, April 28, 2014. Vote, uh, sale of wine at Farmer's Market, 2014 applicant, um, Kipton Kumler. Um, vote, sale of wine at Farmer's Market, 2014 applicant, David Nielsen. Request, contractor drain layer license. Reappointment, controller. Request, permit for Memorial Day Parade, Monday, 26. Monday, May 26, 2014, and request for a one-day beer and wine license for May 28, 2014 at the Regent Theater for the fifth annual Ciclismo, uh, Ciclismo? Classico Bike Travel Film Festival. Sorry if I pronounced any of that wrong. Move approval subject to all conditions as set forth. Second. Second. Um, any discussion? I don't know if um, seeing, I, saw the, I thought, saw Ms. Lewis out there. I don't know if she wanted to. Say a few words. Hmm. Hi, Ruth. Hello. Hey, Ruth. Ruth Lewis, Comptroller. I just want to say thank you very much for another three years, hopefully. Cool. Thank, thank you. you. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Moving, forward. Moving on. Update. Cable contracts. Mr. Marr. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I know we have a full agenda. I appreciate an opportunity to come in and brief you on the current status of uh, cable negotiations. Uh, as I outlined in the memorandum, which I think it was in your packet, uh, although the various licenses don't, in fact, uh, expire until July, for instance, the first one of 2016, our, that's Comcast, RCN, and 
September of that year and the following year, March of uh, Verizon. The process actually be begins now under federal law. Um, I'm here just to review that briefly with you. Um, the Cable Advisory Committee's sole reason for existence is to advise you as licensing authority. Uh, we look to the direction of the town manager as well as presumably the head of the negotiating team. But we're here to serve the Board of Selectmen. Members of the Board of the Commission Committee are myself, Joseph Weiss, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Michael uh, Quinn, and uh, David Good, the, your Director of Technology. There is a vacancy. Uh, I will announce with your uh, permission tonight at town meeting that there is a vacancy and, and solicit indications of interest from other individuals. Perhaps we could do the usual process, put it on the website, the resumes come in, go to the manager, I mean, come to the manager, go to the selectman, go to the manager, manager, do a vetting process, come, perhaps come to you with a recommendation. The process is very simple. Uh, the negotiation actually begins when the town puts together uh, a projected license or a wish list to each of the respective uh, license holders. Uh, they respond with a projected license. Negotiations ensue. Uh, prior to that time, uh, <clears throat> we have an ascertainment period. And we're actually suggesting to you that we get with that ascertainment period. Begin, we're suggesting it begins actually next month. The process is, an, and, and the, your committee is very pleased to take a lead on that, if you like. Uh, we interview all the stakeholders, ACMI, various department heads in town, Council on Aging, elderly folks. Uh, we probably will put together a survey that we can get out to town meeting members as well as the general public. Uh, that generally takes about a six month period. Once that is finalized, uh, we will then come to you with those results, suggest to you a, a list uh, of both uh, percentage um, revenue to go, to presumably go to ACMI, and some capital expenditures to benefit the town, which has been the case in the past. Um, the, I will, in subsequent memoranda, give you uh, a review of each of the highlights of the respective licenses, and we'll keep you up to date. And again, we're here to serve the licensing authority, and we look forward to doing that. Thank you, Mr. Mark. Any comments? Mr. Greeley. Can I say first how wonderful it is, Mr. Mark, to have you back in front of us? Well, as I was telling you in the, in the inner sanctum before, my life is desolation now, with at least Monday nights. <laughs> and is there I, any I, selectman I, I, that I you sit. miss more than any others, Mr. Uh, no, not really. <laughs> Let me repeat the question. You may not have understood. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Monday nights, I, I sit at the camp and just stare out the window and toward the town hall. Mr. Moderator, I asked that we asked Mr. Meyer and his committee to uh, complete uh, filling that committee and to uh, lead us through the ascertainment process. process and report back to us after the six months, unless he needs us before then. Second. That sounds great. Um, now, should we leave the appointment process up to the selectman's office? Would that be appropriate? Uh, it, 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 yeah, it, the appointment is the Board of Selectmen's, but I'm sure is that with everything you look, you look to the town manager for a recommendation. We'll aid uh, Mr. Champtelaine in, in any vetting any candidates. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Meyer. Um, I know that we have um, many residents here to just... Sorry, did we want to vote the motion? Oh, we have to vote. Sorry. Um, we had a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Four nothing vote. Um, as I was saying, I know there, uh, there are many residents here to talk about Wright Street tonight. Um, I would like to ask if uh, you wouldn't mind if we take uh, number 12 on the agenda. Um, which is the vote to endorse the resolution for town meeting electronic, uh, electronic voting out of order in case this meeting runs late and we have to uh, potentially discuss that tonight at town meeting. Um, so uh, move, uh, recommend favorable action. Second. Any discussion? No. Um, well, yeah. I mean, I think that uh, the, the electronic voting has been going well, and I think that we should keep using it. And so, I think we should so advise town meeting that that's what we think they should, we should do. I agree completely. You know. Okay. Um, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you. Now, back to 
Number four, uh, request to repair private way, Wright Street. Um, I think we'll begin by having the board, um, any discussion from the board, and we'll ask the residents to speak. Mr. Kira. Uh, th thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I appreciate it. Um, and I, you know, appreciate, um, you know, everything that's been put forward uh, to, the, to the board on this matter. Um, as the resident of a private way that's gone through uh, some similar uh, machinations before, I recognize that uh, these types of um, <clears throat> projects can be contentious within the neighborhood. Um, I um, was contacted by some residents of, of the neighborhood, um, and I did meet with them as well as the representative um, for uh, the abutters uh, to the, the, um, the project. And um, I would like, with the, if it's appropriate, Mr. Chair, I'd like to uh, put forward a, uh, a motion uh, which does appear on the desk and uh, was uh, run by uh, town council. Uh, and then I'll explain it if, it if it receives a second. Move that the Board of Selectmen do hereby grant partial approval of the 2014 private way repair petition received from abutters of the private way known as Wright Street between Summer Street and Huntington Road Set approval to extend from Summer Street to the property boundary between the lots known as 23 Wright Street and 27 Wright Street. This approval is conditioned upon two-thirds of the abutting property owners to such a revised scope of the betterment, agreeing to such partial approval pursuant to Title III, Article III, Section 4 of the Town Bylaws. Authorization of, the, of expenditures from the private way account shall not exceed $20,000. The resultant cost shall be apportioned, assessed, and collected on a per-property basis in accordance with Article 3 repairs to par private ways of the bylaws of the Town of Arlington and Chapter 80 of the General Laws, the Betterment Act. Do we have a second? Second, sir. Okay, if, if I might explain. Yes, please. Um, so I was contacted uh, by residents and I, I went down and I think that, um, you know, our private way um, bylaw, the repair by bylaw, is put there for um, really one or two reasons. Firstly, um, it provides a financing mechanism for residents of private, private ways who may not otherwise be able to um, incur the costs that, that can be substantial to, um, to you know, pave and redo a, a private way. And so it does provide a provision for paying over time. The town actually floats the money out of the, um, the private way account, which is what we're being uh, asked to, one of the things that we're being asked to authorize uh, tonight. The other thing that it, it enables is, um, it does provide a mechanism such that um, when a project is put forward, um, it is possible to uh, forward the project even if there is uh, some uh, opposition within, uh, along the, abut the abutting, um, uh, amongst the abutters uh, around that project so that nothing, things are not uh, stopped uh, completely in their, in their uh, tracks. Um, this project is a little bit different, and I'd like to refer my, my colleagues to the map that's included in the packets. Um, <clears throat> the, if you look at the map and you also compare it with the, um, the list of abutters who are petitioning for the improvements, you'll find that there are actually, in this case, there are two abutters who did not um, agree to the, um, to the improvements. And as it happens, the two abutters who did not extreme end of, um, of the uh, project limits as, as outlined on this map. They, they show up on the map as 27 uh, and 34 um, Wright Street. Um, I th we think that that uh, 34 is actually um, in error as the abutters list represents this as 36 um, Wright Street, which um, um, uh, did not agree to the, to the work. As is um, proposed by the petitioners, um, the work would extend past um, the two properties where um, the, the owners do uh, oppose uh, the work being done and, and the associated assessments. It would also proceed uh, further um, across the intersection with um, Huntington Road to the corner of the uh, wetlands there by the, the Reeds, Reeds Brook, as, as you know. Um, a number of people in the, in the area have expressed um, concern around the, the wetlands issues and the potential for um, a cut through traffic issue when uh, people are waiting at the, at the lights to go down to Park Ave extension. Um, but more importantly, I think we have a unique situation here where we have two um, abutters at the, at the end of the road who are opposing it and would not ne necessarily uh, be standing in the way of, of the, the majority of the project um, uh, being completed. Um, as I see it, we have um, a very um, 
tricky balancing act to, to pursue here. And I see that we have potentially four goals that we want to try to, um, th th to my mind, we would want to try to, um, to see. Firstly, we would want to see um, all or most of the residents petitioning for the, for the betterment to be able to, to take advantage um, of that. Secondly, I think that if it was at all possible, we would like to avoid um, forcing uh, an assessment upon residents who, who are in opposition, if, if possible. Thirdly, uh, I, I think that um, there is a goal to, to, to try to balance the wetlands area. That, that is within the 100-foot 100, 100, um, buffer area. And I, that's not strictly within this board's purview, but I think it's important information to have at our hands. And fourthly, I, I think that there, there has been a concern raised about um, if the, the cut through, if the um, surface area is made too convenient, it, it may well uh, create a cut through over to Summer Street and, and, and um, beyond. The last um, issue that is not necessarily an explicit goal, but I think um, would be a desired outcome of any um, decision, would be that any um, apportioned assessments be the same or less than, than what um, is in the, the proposal that's before us right now. Um, I've been communicating um, with uh, Mr. DiMartino, who has been representing uh, residents uh, to the board on this. And you'll see that um, he has procured the uh, quotes for, um, for the work to be done. And under the proposal before you, I'm suggesting that we um, approve expenditures from the private way fund to um, extend from Summer Street to the property line uh, between 23 and 27. Um, Mr. DiMartino has provided a revised quote which does appear on our, um, our desks from uh, Rick Cooper Asphalt Paving, which um, comes in at $20,000 as opposed to the 27.5 that, um, that we have uh, in our packets. Um, if uh, we were to, to um, follow the, the motion that's before us, uh, that, that I've, I've put forward, I think it works out to, an, um, knocking out those two end homes, it works out to um, uh, an assessment of uh, 1818 per person, which is about, about $300 um, less per person um, on, on the assessment. There's one issue, though, and I think it's important to just to, to raise this uh, right here. There is one home, it appears as 28 on, on the map, which um, does desire uh, paving in front of their, uh, their property, and they would not get, through this board's action, they would not be able to get the full um, benefit of, of that, it, um, the town financing for that portion. They would have to, um, I think, pursue an agreement with, with their, their neighbors um, beyond the, um, the town's action to be able to either get that paving or, or to be made whole in some other, other way. So this is, this is what I'm proposing. I, I think it um, strikes a reasonable balance between a, a number of competing interests in, in the neighborhood. Um, but I'd, I'd like to hear what the residents have to say as well. Mr. Dunn. Uh, my, my first question is on the amount, 20,000. So I know you, we've got a quote here for 20,000, but I always worry about putting into hard um, number, mm -hmm. like how how confident are we in twenty thousand? Is there? Is there? Oh, yeah. It's all based on the on the quote. Yeah. So provided. then, I guess I respectfully request that we change the twenty thousand to some, something like thirty thousand, and let the bid process take care of it, and not try to cap it so tight to what the bid is. Because I mean. Yeah, you understand my argument. I do understand, and, and I have no problem with that. I think just we should clarify for the, uh, Mr. Chair, if it's okay, yeah, you to respond. I, I think it's important to clarify to residents, we're not saying that the, the job costs 30000 We're saying we're authorizing an expenditure yeah. out of the private way account up to $30,000. Um, I, I think that we, yes, and I really do think we should but do I, that. I think we might want to ask council. So um, before the, what's before the board right now is a motion and to some degree, the number can remain ambiguous in the motion itself. But when the formal betterment order is adopted, there has to be an estimate that cannot be changed. In other words, it cannot exceed that amount. Um, and it also impacts the third that has to be put forth before the remaining amount can basically uh, become ripe for assessment later. So there, there does have to be, uh, at some point um, before at least the order is finalized, 
um, and signed by the selectmen a, a set number. So the, the, the contractor has to, I guess, understand that as well, that it's not, um, it's not, it's not really an estimate in the, in the traditional sense of the word. That it's, it's, it's binding to some degree on the, on the town and the residents in terms of what the expectation is about. Should we be putting that level of specificity in this vote? I, I think that if you don't put it in this vote, you're going to have to put it in very, very soon thereafter. So in theory, you could not, you could exclude it from this vote. Um, because Mr. Kuro is proposing to change the scope of what the petition has asked for, it has to go back and then be approved by two-thirds of the folks who are actually now affected by this revised proposal under our bylaws. So that if you look at the map, whereas previously it would have included properties 34 and 27, yeah. Now it will require a two-thirds agreement to Mr. Kuro's revision of the properties minus those two. So your reading, your reading of the bylaw—that's interesting. So your reading of the bylaw then is that we actually, we have, if we change the scope, we have to go back and talk to everybody. You don't Again. have to go back and talk to everybody. What I'm saying is that as the petition has been drawn up yeah. to be X, now the selectmen would say, "We'll approve Y." You have to make sure that they still want it. They don't. There's not another hearing. They just have to say that we, the two-thirds right. of these folks agree to this because otherwise we could dramatically change the proposal and they'd still be sort of stuck saying. Okay. All right. And I, um, I'm uncomfortable shall not exceed 20,000. So we can we'll see how we're going to. My other comment is I, my current preference, having walked around the neighborhood and checked things out, is that uh, talked to some people, is that I would rather say the border rather than between 23 and 27. I would rather say the border between 28 and 34. That's my current preference, but I'm very interested in hearing what the residents say. But I want to put that out on the table to perhaps see what feedback we get from people who come to the microphone. Um, and the reason I say 28 and 34 is I understand that that does impact 27. I mean, it's a, there's a, I have, you know, there is not a compromise here I see that makes everybody happy. And the question is, is who's unhappy? And in this case, I'm picking. Um, the, and, and, I, and I don't see a way to make both number 28 and number 27 happy. And so I'm, my preference, I think, is to, uh, given what I see the road, you know, looking at the road and what I know I would want and the expressed desires. So, but I look forward to hearing more input before I really choose what I'm going to vote. Great. Mr. Greeley. So that's similar to what I was going to ask, why we don't say on the right to end at 23 to 27, and on the left to end between 28 and 34. I know it's a diagonal line, but it still includes the property 28. Uh, but am I right that we do have the two-thirds vote of everybody uh, without 27 and 34? Yes. yes. Well, that's what we require to have this done, so I want to hear from the neighbors, of course. That's fine. Okay, so I think, well, Mr. Chaplin, you have, no? Okay, um, I think we'll open up to the neighbors now. Um, if I think it would be best, I think, you know, we're gonna have quite a few people to speak. Um, so perhaps if we could just start at the beginning and form a line um, behind the microphone, and then as people sit down and more room opens up, we can just uh, kind of funnel in back through the, through everyone who would like to speak. Yes, please. Good evening. I'm 28 Wright Street. Um, you know, actually, the concentration of the holes actually are between my property and I guess it's 27. Um, so we we are the yes and the no. Yep. Um, it's my understanding, though, that 27 is the only no. I, I believe 36 was actually a no show. Um, there are reasons for it. 34. Uh, I believe the address is 36. Yeah, I think this is messed 36. up. 36. The map is oh, incorrect. Yeah. Um, I have some ideas about why that's a no-show, but I'd rather not say that on a public forum. I can tell you later. Um, but I would be confident if I was allowed to do something, at least in front of my own property, that I would have 36 as permission. And I would have no problem asking George if that would uh, 27 if that would be okay to do something in front of my property property only um, I just want to outline a few things that I experience as the um, Concentration is in front of my house 
It's not really a, a cosmetic issue for me at this point. There have actually been uh, winters where the holes have been bad enough that the plows would lift at Huntington, drive to Berkeley, and then put the pl plow back down to shovel. And so I'm the only house in the middle. I, I don't sit on top of Huntington uh, like 36 does, nor the neighbor to my right sits on Berkeley. So they have other mm -hmm. exits off of the street. Whereas when that happens uh, with the snow and the lack of shoveling, I walk out and I have to decide, do I shovel to Huntington to get out or do I shovel to Berkeley to get out? I think that's unique to me only and, and that's not an easy task. Um, that's, that's the biggest issue for me and, and as a taxpayer, I cannot be, I should not be denied services because of the whole. So I think it's a, it's a hazardous thing at this point. It's just not a cosmetic thing. The idea of the road as is no longer works. I have um, a few times with my husband, we've spent money out of our own pocket to have truckloads of gravel and dirt delivered. It costs between $500 and $600 to have a truckload of gravel. That's just to have it brought and dumped onto the street. My husband and I, again, with the shovels, like Paul Bunyan, have to get out there day and night and get that into the holes. And that just barely makes the holes that are in the concentration of my street. Those holes, by the way, like I said, are shared between me and 27. But I've been the one to try to tackle those holes. Um, so obviously, you can, you can understand that the cost of now having it paved is like a sale, a coal sale. You know, compared to truckloads of dirt, which, when the plow does come and does put it down, it digs that right back up, and that's gone instantly that winter within a couple of plows. So the best economic thing is to is to have it paved. Um, I, I I think for me those those are the most important points I can express. I'm sure there are other people who want to say something, but I just wanted to express that as the person who is most vulnerable by the holes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Michelle DeRocher. I'm a Precinct 19 town meeting member, as well as an associate <coughs> member of the Conservation Commission. So I'm going to make a few remarks with each of those hats on, um, starting first with the town meeting member role. Um, I got involved due to the varying opinions about the um, uh, approving this particular project by some of the neighbors. And I really appreciate first one to say the um, attempt by the board to come up with a compromise solution. Um, it's, it is certainly not a straightforward issue, but I'm really in support of uh, Mr. Kuro's substitute motion as a, a good compromise of the issues at hand. Um, because the town bylaw specifically talks about your role in approving in whole or in part, I think the, the concentration of the homes that don't approve the project at the um, alternate solution. The issues um, with some of the non-abutter uh, neighbors th that were brought to my attention had to do a lot with the traffic, as Mr. Curo has mentioned, but also about the speed of the traffic, partly in uh, relation to the entrance to McLennan Park. Um, as you may know, there is a distinct entrance to the park there, and because of the nature of the neighborhood being a quiet, um, sort of off-the-beaten-path type of neighborhood, uh, citizens walk in the roadway there's, with their strollers, with their dogs, with young children on tricycles. And so there is, um, I think, a, a pace of activity there that does require, you know, a little bit of attention with your um, decision. I was appreciative of uh, also some alternate solutions being um, put forward to, for traffic calming, um, such as speed bumps or raised areas of the roadway. Um, 
things of that nature which you can evaluate. I don't know which ones of those may be even possible or legal, but I, I just urge you to um, think about some of those mitigations, if possible, in the final um, project that's approved. With my Conservation Commission hat on, um, I just want to also point out that there are some permitting um, issues that would need to be coming before the Conservation Commission on two points. Um, first, the proximity to the wetland. Um, and secondly, the uh, elevation of the scope of the work in relation to the floodplain. So those were the two areas that in my conversation with the Conservation Commission Administrator this morning, um, she has conveyed to the, um, the representative for the neighbors in support of the project. I, what I don't know offhand is if the, the different lines that you're considering completely remove it from the jurisdiction of the CONCOM, but certainly because it would move it away from the wetlands, that would be a superior outcome from a wetlands resource perspective. Um, and those are my main points. Thank you very much for deliberating so carefully. Thank you, Michelle. Comments? Next. I live on um, 9 Wright Street. I've been there for over 20 years. I used to be quite fond of the dirt road. I'm not anymore. Um, the road's a mess. It has deteriorated over the years. Uh, the potholes are enormous. I walk a large dog at night and during the daytime. I walk through mud, slush, snow, water. It's icy all winter or slushy because the salt doesn't work on a dirt road. Um, the plows pick up the dirt and dump it, often near the conservation land. Um, so we have a problem of dirt moving back and forth. I am tired of shoveling dirt all winter. Um, I think it's really important that as a neighborhood we have thought about paving for a long time and we have the votes now to say yes. So I'm very much in support of moving ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is George Tefankian, number 27, the culprit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we all have reasons to buy our houses, and one of the reasons was for me to buy a house in a peaceful, quiet place, and that was Wright Street. And that was 24 years ago, so I'm one of the no, old-timers in there. Um, I bought that because I didn't want any traffic, I didn't want any t cars or any noise in there. And my house is on the corner, and specifically is vulnerable for both sides, and vehicles coming right now, cutting through from one side, even though it's all potholes, messy, and everything else. They still drive, coming to the corner, and then taking off on Huntington Road. Um, I don't like that. I'm not for, I'm not for uh, paving the road. I don't want to be against my neighbors. However, uh, I have no reason. I don't even have a driveway. My land. Uh, Mr. Kura has seen that. It extends up, it's about six feet high. I don't even use Wright Street. It's all stoned and everything else. I use all my entrances and everything. It's on Huntington Road. That may sound kind of selfish, but listen, we were not blind when we bought the properties. I knew where I was buying my property. Everybody else knew where they were buying it. So why would I you know, pay or go through the traffic and the noise of this paving, where the only winner, I think, financially speaking, is the developer. He wants to buy, build those houses, and I don't blame him to build them up, <coughs> maximize his profit, sell them out, and he's gone. We're stuck with everything else. Higher assessment, higher taxes, higher traffic, and the cost. So it would have been a little bit different if he had come and said, okay, neighborhood, I don't know what he's done to everybody else. Listen, I'm gonna buy those lands in here. I'm gonna build, build, put up three houses. Okay, and in order for me to sell them for the highest price, I need to pave it, and I need your permission. So can we do something about that rather than just playing with their emotions? Of course they're sick and tired of their shoveling and everything else, but they knew that when they bought them, when they bought the houses. 
And I knew that when I bought the house that I want, everything was on Huntington Road. So I am against it for that reason. And safety, we have, we have a couple of uh, neighbors in there, they have kids. They have new kids. I don't know how they are agreeing, but it's their decision. But my thing is that you know, the kids are not going to be able to play around in there. That's a big thing. I don't know if they bought it for that reason. About the pothole being big enough and everything, the cars being, the cars being ruined, their uh, suspensions, this and that, uh, drive slowly in there. You just get out of there and get on the main road and drive. So I'm against it. Specifically, I'm very much against it. And I hope that the board understands that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jennifer Norris. I'm at 14 Wright Street, and uh, we've lived in that house for seven years. We have a nine-year-old and a 16-month-old, so we're definitely among the folks that have enjoyed the quiet of the road um, and have concerns about people using Wright Street from Huntington as a cut-through. I'm a Boston driver. I know you always go through where you can, um, can get through quickly and don't have to have the patience of the lights. Um, and it's a concern that we had as we were deliberating whether we wanted to vote yes, which we ultimately did on the paving project. Um, you know, like everybody who has spoken of shoveling and the potholes, uh, the road is in terrible condition. And from our driving point of view, um, that's very unpleasant. From uh, walking around the, in front of your house, it's very nice because there's very little traffic. Um, as we deliberated, we talked about two different solutions that for us would make us more comfortable voting yes. One of them was the idea of not paving all the way through Huntington, but we were aware that particularly one neighbor who spoke earlier uh, really felt strongly that she needed the services and the paving of the road, um, that it was in a condition that wouldn't work for her. And so I'm interested in Mr. Dunn's uh, proposal that would allow her at least to have some paving. The other solution that we discussed and I talked briefly with the town engineer about was the idea of putting in speed bumps. We were advised that the plowers uh, do not like to have speed bumps, that they eventually get destroyed uh, from the paving and that it creates kind of a dangerous situation for their equipment. So we've explored the option of having uh, temporary seasonal speed bumps that we can put in during the months that are not plowed. And the neighbors have agreed that we would purchase such a device to go across the road um, to help mitigate the speed. And uh, with that agreement, we felt comfortable voting yes. So I guess you could say we're kind of middle of the road <laughs> on the proposals, uh, both literally and figuratively. And uh, I just wanted to contribute those thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dunn. Um, I, I'm, I've, I'm ready to formalize what I, was, what I said before as, a, as an amendment to Joe. Um, I, I think Joe's got the great, uh, I completely appreciate the spirit of it, but uh, I want to make, I would change 23 and 27 to pave it up to 28 and 34, and I want to uh, change the number 20,000 to 30,000, and I offer that as an amendment to Joe's motion. Second? Uh, I'll second that for discussion. Okay. Mr. Greeley. Yeah. I, I'm wondering whether the resident of 34 or 36, whatever the correct number is here, and whether he or she would choose to speak on this. Okay. Uh, because I, I favor the paving of this road, but I, I oppose the amendment and my apologies. I want you to imagine that it was numbers 19 and 18. I know it isn't. I'm just giving a hypothetical here. If we make this now change to the bylaw, which is if two thirds of the residents want it, it's done. Now we're saying, oh, except for these two spaces, and the one resident who spoke just said, uh, I don't really deal with it because I'm, I'm on Huntington Road uh, in terms of the entrances into his property and stuff. All of the, two-thirds of the neighbors want this. What I'm, imagine if it was 19 and 18. Would we say, okay, let's pave it up to 19 and 18, and then we'll stop, and then let's start repaving it again from 23 and 1. So I'm more, I understand these two are at the end, and I'm, you know they have their right to their opinions and stuff, but the gentleman who just spoke uh, at 27 didn't convince me that it isn't a selfish decision on his part. Uh, I understand about the neighbor's concern about cars uh, 
rushing through there, I live in Mystic Street. I know about speeding cars going by and stuff, but I'd rather that than the potholes. I mean, I don't want them speeding either. I understand that. But I, I'm worried about we set this precedent, and now another private road comes in and says, hey, wait a minute. You made an exception for two houses before. Why can't we make an exception for me? I'm against it. The bylaw is if two-thirds of the neighbors want it, we vote it. That's my opinion. Mr. Chair. Mr. Carroll. Yeah, th thank you, Mr. Greeley. I appreciate that. I, I think I would not have brought this forward, actually, if the bylaw didn't specifically say the board may, after careful consideration, elect to do the entire portion which was petitioned for or a lesson, lesser portion. I understand. And that's, 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 that, I that, and that, that's why. Are you um, and, I, and, I, and, and I understand, and I think that the reasons behind the bylaw and the two-thirds do make sense for precisely the the hypothetical example that you put forward, when, when somebody's in the middle, I think I said that at the outset, if somebody's in the middle of a road, they could potentially block the entire project um, for everyone. I, I also, I, I think it's important that we make clear here um, that no matter what we vote tonight, if we vote Mr. Dunn's amendment to my, my, my motion, if we vote my motion, if we vote to support the original petition, we're actually not voting on whether or not the work can be done. We're voting on what scope of work we're willing to uh, fund out of the uh, private way repair account. So if it was just that margin, for example, let's take another hypothetical. If my motion were to work to prevail, there is still a margin there for that half of the half of the frontage, which could theoretically be handled outside of the uh, the town's. Um, uh, private way account. And that, 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 that's, that's what I'm proposing, so. Are you aware of another private way where we've done this, excluded homes from the private way? Page? You would know that far better than I. <laughs> I honestly don't. I don't, I don't think anybody, no. can anybody here remember such a thing? Okay. I mean, I, I'm, I understand yeah. we can, I'm just. Yeah. Mr. Dunn. I guess, Mr. Greeley, my, my concern is, is that if we do the original motion, we look at um, neither 34 nor 27, has expressed that they want this to happen. Right. And uh, they, and we have the opportunity to pave everybody who wants it and not pave in front of those two who don't because of the way the, and so uh, if we go with the original petition, we're paving a stretch of road that as far as I can tell, no one actually wants paved. Like I haven't heard anyone say, I want the corner of Huntington right. I mean, so I know uh, Joe was walking around yesterday. I, I, did a walk up the street last night. You know, it was a beautiful day. There are a few people hanging out. I haven't yet heard, and I didn't hear tonight either, anyone say, I want the intersection of Huntington and Wright paved. And I heard a number of people who said that they don't want that intersection paved because of fear of cut through. And so that's why, I, that's why I'm suggesting that the change. I didn't hear that. I heard it from one person. Who do? 27. No, no, uh, but. I didn't hear other. I'm but, you did, but, but Mr. Greeley, I don't think we, either of us heard anyone who say, I want okay. that corner to be paved. Does anybody out there want it paved all the way to Huntington? I will shut, oh, wait, 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 hands are going. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> wait, we, we, we still want, we have more discussion coming from all right. there. Okay. That's I, helpful. I'm just that's asking. great. I'm just saying I didn't hear oh, it. I think that's very healthy. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, my name is Mimi Lawson. I live at 73 Huntington Road. I am on the corner across from George. And uh, we really have gone through this. I've been in the house. 45 years, we've been through this process four times. Now all of a sudden, I see repair of Huntington Road. This all came about because new houses went up on the street and they decided the road should be paved. I am not involved, I don't, didn't get any letters, but I am really opposed to any paving and has anyone ever thought of really grading the road? There are a lot of ruts grade the road, it would be a lot simpler, less costly, and that's something that no one has ever brought up. It can't be done that way, sorry. Why if is that? If work is done, it needs to be paved. I mean, unless the private residents want to just do something without our help. Right, Adam, can you explain mm -hmm. that? And we, we have taken care of potholes in front of our garage, and I mean, in front of our driveway many times without asking the town for any help. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Mike. Mike. 
I'm Mike DiMartino, and I'm the big bad builder. So this, this all happened. The neighborhood got together, and we all kind of joined forces. I did not shove this down anybody's throat by any means, George. Um, this all happened because they've been trying to do this for 10 years. Um, we've, we've, we had a neighborhood meeting. We all sat there. They signed petition right off the bat. Within 10 minutes, everybody wanted this. I'm the one that's, that's occurring the costs, a lot of them. The surveying, the engineering, any manhole raising, I proposed that I would take care of it just to help this through and help these neighbors. They've been trying to do this for 10 years. Um, and I, I, I feel like I'm being put on the spot like I'm the one that's driving this. And I, I'm really not. You know, now I'm, I'm part of this neighborhood and, and, uh, and, and they're just trying to get this done. And, and we have some, an engineering, ho hopefully Mike will, will speak today. He's been up there. This, this road is a mess. It really is. And it needs to be addressed. So. Any questions? Well, if I may, Mr. Just uh, well, once, Mike, could you come back? Ms. Grayley has a question. No, 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 no. I just wanted, we all agree the road needs to be done. It's not, it's, we're, okay. it's what we're doing. So it's, please just speak to the 3427 end issue, if you mm -hmm. would. Yes. So I'm Natalie Zani. I'm a lifelong resident of Arlington, and I've lived on Wright Street for 10 years. I'm number 23, so I'm in the dividing line, I guess. Um, I just wanted to reiterate that we just, uh, what Mike just said, we met as a neighborhood, and we have been working on this off and on for 10 years to have this happen. It just so happens that Mike has um, purchased property in the neighborhood. It was a catalyst to once again have this discussion, but it's certainly nothing that um, anybody has been forced to do. We had a meeting at my own house where I had the petition and we offered people time to think about it if they wanted to. And before I knew it, the petition was back in my hands fully signed. Mm -hmm. So that tells me that we have alignment within the neighborhood, for the most part, understanding my neighbor, Mr. Tufkenian and his wife are not supportive. Number 34 or 36 has not participated. Mm -hmm. We have neighborhood events, they do not participate. Um, we would love them to, but they don't. So we don't know what their stake is um, in this situation or what their thoughts are. Um, I think it needs to be done, it's time. Change happens. Um, I moved into my house and I made changes, things happen. Even though you buy a property and it's a certain way, things do evolve over time and need to be repaired and we're at that point with the road. Okay. Thank you. Great. Does anyone have any other um, kind of new comments? We, I think we, we're getting a pretty good scope of you know, a lot of the issues, but if anyone has anything new to add to the conversation, we would love to hear that. Um, can I, uh, if you have to come to the microphone. Can I hand you something for only your viewing, not to be? Um, I just want to, can you check that? Yeah, can let's check. Can we on it? I don't uh, think we can we on can't, we, we can't do that in an open meeting. No. Unfortunately, any, yeah. okay. anything we consider has to be a part of the public record. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll say this much, um, which is kind of what I said before. In terms of uh, 36 Wright Street, I, I believe if, if it were not uh, a case of cost, they would probably be quite indifferent, uh, unlike George is a clear and fervent no. Um, they, they keep a low profile in terms of, I think, showing out and interacting with us as neighbors uh, because there was actually a violation into my home. So that's why probably they would not be sitting next to here. However, um, like I said, I do, uh, you know, I, I have interacted with them since and confronted, et cetera, et cetera. And I do feel comfortable enough to approach them and say, would I be able to do something in front of my home with your permission? I'm, I'm quite confident that they would have no problem with that. In terms of it going to Huntington, because it would cost them, I'm sure they you know, would rather not have to pay anything. Would they have a problem if, you know, it was free or something? I think so. Question from the board. Ms. Mahan. Quick question, recognizing that the chair has to get down to town meeting. Yes. Perhaps a yes or no. Um, on the issue of seasonal road bumps, that is not something we allow. Uh. On, the, on the question of seasonal road bumps, um, from my knowledge from sitting here, that's is, is that something we allow or is that something we don't? I know it's, it's a practice we've not allowed in the past. Uh, I'm unclear and uh, I know town council and I would have to discuss whether or not we could allow it on a private way or, ha or have any ability to prohibit it on a private way. I don't, Mike, Mike, do so, you know? Okay. Uh, I, 
good afternoon, Mike Rademark of Public Works. I, I know of one other location, private way, that uh, the folks put out a speed bump in the summer and then pull it back in the winter. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other discussion from the board? Any more from the audience? Um, so I think we'll begin by taking a vote on Mr. Dunn's motion, um, to which everyone knows it will go up to $30,000 in the amendment, and it will be between 28 and uh, straight across to 27. Yep. Is that correct, Mr. Dunn? Yes. No. Yes. Is it? I That's thought it was yeah. diagonal. Is it I, I, am un, I don't believe that, I, that it's practical, is my concern. Yeah. If it was, I would, I would do it. I just don't see it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we'll, we have that vote now. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Four to one vote on the amendment. Do you have to go to town meeting? Yeah, after this vote I'm going to. I abstain mostly. Okay, oh, four, so three to one with Kevin abstaining, Marie. Thank you. So I just need some clarification wait, before this wait, vote. We, we, have, we, uh, we, we have to vote the, vote the main motion, yes. right? Okay, yeah, sorry. No, yeah. I understand. So, uh, Doug, so his, uh, I don't think it's a good precedent to set, but I do want to get it paved. Mm -hmm. Can I vote no against him, but will it still get paved? Well, it probably will if it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. So now we have a vote on the main motion. All those in play, favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Right. Four to one. Four and to I one. think it was an excellent idea and a good compromise. I just don't like setting this no. precedent. Yeah. I, I do appreciate all the work that was done. I think that was a, we came out to a pretty good decision there for everyone involved. Okay, yes. So <laughs> now I, it would be helpful if everyone had the map. But we, we did approve paving. And it will go from the end of lot 28 straight across halfway through partially through 27? To Summer Street. Yes. On this, um, is that clear? Okay. Thank you. But, uh, yeah. So as I understand town council, though, because we as a board just modified the petition that you originally put forward, you're going to have to redo the petition with the, and get two-thirds of the people on that segment, mm -hmm. which I think you could probably do right yeah. now. <laughs> um, but, yeah. What, sorry? Uh, it has to be in writing. Sign it, and uh, just turn it back into the selectman's office. Yeah. That would be great. And um, at this point, um, I believe a few of us will have to go down to town meeting. Uh, I do, and Mr. Greeley does, as well as Adam. And uh, Mr. Kiro is going to take over. Um, I think little. I can just sit here, I think. Yeah, I don't see an issue with that. Okay. okay, great, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, very, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, next. next item on the agenda is uh, the introduction of the newly appointed Disability Commission member, uh, Burton D. Poosh. All right, Chief, Ms. please come forward. I'm sorry, did I pronounce your name correctly? Actually, it's PUSH as an open door. PUSH! <laughs> so it's very push. easy to, to do. So, well, I'm glad you're here. Thank you for voting me in. So, um, uh, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, give us a few words about yourself, why you're interested yeah. in oh, this position. Um, I have a doctorate in rehabilitation, and I've been working as a disability rights advocate for decades now. Um, and I really like Arlington. I really, this is one of my favorite places to be. And uh, we all have work to do no matter where we live and where we exist. And uh, hopefully the skill sets and experience that I have and bring to the table will hopefully help the commission move forward and do things for, in my opinion, future generations. I'm not, I don't necessarily think about what I need, but what do the future generations? Because we're moving into more and more of an inclusive environment in all cities everywhere. So. Well, I'll say that your, your resume was certainly very impressive, and we really appreciate you devoting the time uh, you know, and talent to, to the commission that uh, does a lot of important work in town. Thanks. Yeah. It's good to be here. Yeah. I, I've, um, 
I, I really, I listen, I, the disability issues are not something that's part of my expertise, and so I listen a lot to what the Committee on Disabilities has to say, and uh, I would really welcome regular, I think with some committees come forward and they come to the Board of Selectmen and they say, you know, this is, the Bike Committee, for instance, is really good about showing up and saying, these are the things we worked on, these are the things we uh, made progress on, these are the things that we're planning on, and it helps me a lot in terms of what I think we should be doing next so that I can help them. And uh, I think it would be great if uh, we saw more from the, uh, you know, like uh, feedback about what, what the important things are. Well, I think we're on the same page in that. I, I'd like to see more of a visible presence. Excellent. To be honest with you, so. Cool. All right. Ms. Mahan, did you have? Yeah. Um, if it hasn't been, move approval. Mm -hmm. Good idea. <laughs> oh, it, it was approved last. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we, this yeah, Mr. 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 Push was not available. Oh, I'm, sorry, uh, Dr. I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, Dr. Push, Push was I, unavailable in the last, um, oh, okay. last meeting. I should remember that. Yeah. Um, and just to sort of echo the um, comments that were just made, I know this board is taking an extra concerted effort to utilize the Disability Commission. We did it with the electronic voting, um, and the committee said there were some, the electronic voting committee um, said there were things they hadn't really thought of. I just want to bring to your attention, because it happened recently within the past four to six weeks, um, and the commission through the town manager could stay on top of this. We had the study group for the Route 128 study, I'm calling it, where they were talking about um, putting out a survey um, and it was focused a lot around bicycle and some motor vehicle, and I had raised zip car. But the other issue I had raised, since we're getting a sense of how people transport, I had asked that there be three or four questions included regarding children or adult with disabilities, how they tr get transported, whether they do it on their own, whether it's dial a ride or um, private contract through the state, et cetera. But I'm also cognizant of the fact that those questions need to, under HIPAA and some other um, laws, be asked a certain way. So I did ask that group, and I can see um, the woman sitting here, I think her name is Rebecca, but just since you're going to be on the Disability Commission, I would anticipate that you all see that, and if mm -hmm. not... I have so, seen that. Okay, so if you can just make sure that that contact is there, because I think I had four directed questions, okay. but I'm not the expert to say how they should be asked. Right. Okay, super, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Really thank you very much. And next on the agenda, we have the appointment uh, to the Conservation Commission of uh, Susan D. Chapnick. Is Ms. Chapnick here? Hello. Hello. If you could Hi. say a few words about yourself. Sure. My name is Susan Chapnick. I've been a uh, resident of Arlington for almost 30 years. My children have gone to school here. I have a small women-owned business um, with an office in Arlington. I'm an environmental consultant. Um, I got involved in um, assisting the Arlington Conservation Commission last year when we had the unfortunate oil spill into the Mystic River um, at the Rotary, and I volunteered my services in reviewing documents and things under the Massachusetts Contingency Program, which I'm very familiar with. So as I got to work with the Commission a little and the Mystic River Watershed Association, um, then I saw that there was a position open and I thought I would step up my involvement with the town. Okay. Thank you. Do any of my colleagues have any questions, Ms. Chapman? I'm, thank you very much. Volunteers like you make the town work, and we really appreciate it. Uh, I move approval. Second. Um, and just where it, we have the opportunity that we have you here. Thank you so much with your varied background coming um, to this committee. Since I do have your audience, um, I would just like to, something that you're very familiar with from your resume or curriculum vitae. One of um, the things that the board has really watched, especially along the Alwife, is <laughs> are the CSO discharges, yes. the NIPTES permit um, process when that opens up, mm -hmm. as well as the um, variance mm -hmm. um, that sometimes gets issued. Originally when the city of Cambridge and the MWRA and the city of Somerville, uh, the board has always um, in the past asked for, not now, but perhaps within the next 20, 25 years, that all the CSO discharges um, be closed. Uh, Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> and what, when um, yeah. myself and Mrs. Dias, who was on the board at the time, and then Ms. Rowe and, and the other board members, we've attended meetings, um, what we've heard from MWRA and the city of Cambridge, Owen O'Riordan, um, and the city of some of Mayor Curtitone, is that that's something everybody would like to do someday, so I'm trying to hold everybody's feet to the fire to say, even if someday is 25 years out. So um, just in your role in, in this committee commission, 
um, if you all think it's appropriate, because um, I think it's every 15 years that the NIPTES permit process comes up, um, and, and I'm pretty sure that's coming up within the next two to three years. Just um, in your area of expertise, you may see it coming up faster than I do as an individual. And if you think it's appropriate, whether representing the commission or yourself, um, any expertise you could lend to that would be appreciated. Absolutely, and I'll bring that back to um, the administrator as well, to Corey, um, because I'm not familiar with when it's coming up. I'm sure she knows, mm -hmm. and um, definitely lend my expertise to that. I'm in full support. In fact, it's unfortunate that the spill on the river um, it was cleaned up pretty well, but if you look at the impact even upstream of that, it, it, the, the river is impacted, and it's impacted from what's coming off the roadways through, through the CSOs. Um, so that's unfortunate, and, and, and it definitely always, will fight. And we've always maintained, that. since it is recognized as a Class B waterway, mm -hmm. there are legal steps the town of Arlington could, Arlington could take, but that's really kind of going out and reaching and beyond. Mm -hmm. But that's the goal, eventually, is to sure. come in line with that federal state standard of a Class B waterway. Thank you. Well, thank you very thank much. You. Anything else? We appreciate you. Pre appreciate your uh, volunteerism, and I, I think if you've been here three decades, you know how involved the community is in these issues, and you, you just got to hear it on one of our public hearings this evening. There, there were a lot of concerns for thank the. Thank you uh, very much. So thank appreciate you. Appreciate it. Um, oh, okay. we have a vote? All those in favor? Yes. Yes. All opposed? Can I ask a housekeeping matter? You might have said this at the beginning. Attorney Heim, are you recording the I'm votes? Recording the so I won't do it. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Next up, we have uh, appointment to the Arlington Cultural Council, Jeffrey K. Boudreau. Is Mr. Boudreau here? I saw him here earlier, but I saw him duck out. I think he had, a, no. he's, he's also in town meeting. Um, how would my colleagues like to handle this? This was a recommendation directly from the council. Did we want to, do, uh, do we want to vote it and then I invite him back as we did with Mr. Push? Okay. I so I, I would entertain a motion uh, approving the uh, appointment. Uh, approval. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. And just leave it to you, Mr. Carroll, to work with the chairman to get a similar circumstance. Exactly, exactly. And if you could, Mr. Heim, if you could make a note in the minutes as well that we'd like to invite Mr. Boudreau back at our next meeting uh, to introduce himself. Thank you. Next up, we move on to uh, licenses and uh, permits. We have, uh, first we have a request for a common victual license for um, Alejandro Barrientos, Cuenca Incorporated, DBA La Victoria Taqueria, 12 Medford Street. Mr. Barrientos here. Yeah. Please come to the microphone. Hi, how are you? Uh, my name is Alejandro Barrientos, and I'm an Arlington resident. And um, my kids also go to school here. Uh, we are uh, planning on opening the taqueria on 12 Metro Street. Uh, we submit all the applications. And uh, I'm here to answer your questions. If if you do have uh, any? Certainly, thank you. Do my colleagues have any questions or comments? Um, I, I actually don't have a question. I'm really excited that you're here. I'm really excited for the food. I read your application. I read all your reviews on your other locations, uh, location, and I can't wait to taste it. Um, so I move approval subject to all conditions. Do I have a second? Second. And do you have any uh, questions or comments on it? I'd just like to thank you also. We, we did have your review of your other restaurants. They were uh, excellent. Um, I, I did note that uh, the planning department, when looking at your proposal, was so enthusiastic about it that they, they wish that you could stay open even later. So I hope that you do uh, enjoy sufficient success that you'll be able to, yeah, to actually, consider that. Yeah, like, you know, I, we always like to go, you know, settle down first, and then, Absolutely. like, you know, you, you'll decide, like, like you know, down the road, if 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 it's possible to stay open longer, Absolutely. but uh, you know we are very excited, uh, and uh, I know that Darlington is a very selective uh, town with uh, these type of things, and uh, I think we can deliver, and uh, and we are also very excited to to be here well, finally. Fa uh, well, fantastic! Thank you very much. Thank you. So now we'll move to a vote um, in favor uh, for uh, Mr. Dunn's motion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries uh, um, unanimously. Congratulations. We'll look forward to seeing the restaurant. Yes. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda, we have a request for a common victual license, um, also on Medford Street. Or, um, Shunkit Wong, uh, DBA Lucky Dragon Restaurant at 14 Medford Street. 
Hi, good evening. Hello. My good name evening. is Andrea Cole. I'm the Power Legal of Attorney Quiz Commons Office. Tonight I represent the applicant Canon in doing business as Lucky Dragon Restaurant. Our proposed application uh, basically is just for the change of ownership. Okay. The new owner is taking over the existing restaurant. Uh, they will keep the same nature, Chinese food, same, uh, same hour and same uh, sitting capacity. The only change will be the DBA name. We will change to Lucky Dragon Restaurant. Great. Thank you very much. Do I have a motion? Oh, I'm sorry. I keep, right, I keep looking to the right because he's next to me. <laughs> uh, I move approval subject conditions. Second one okay. question, um, sure. if I could just ask through the chair, um, town council, I know Monday through Saturday we have two or three restaurants that are open until 1 a.m., but this says also on Sunday. Is that allowed under our laws? For some reason I had 10 p.m. in my, um, I, I recognize that there are um, no objections, but there are comments and conditions from four other um, departments. Perhaps that's something you could look into, and if, I, I don't know off the top of my head. I'll have to look into it. Uh, but I think that Mr. Uh, Dunn's subject, uh, subject language will be sufficient for us to make sure so that it's So you can work with attorney. I'm, I forgot your last name. Yeah, yeah. we we'll call tomorrow okay. to find out. Yeah, I just, sure. if, if, we, if it's, it's allowed the, under the law, then that's, that's fine. True. I just want to make sure because yeah. I can't recall it. But. Are these the current hours that the restaurant holds? Actually, as I know on my new, they close at 12 on Sunday. So if okay. not 1 a.m., 12 should be fine for them. Okay. I'll let Great. the two councils sure. talk on that. Thank Are you. You good? Yeah, I'm good. All right. Okay. All those in favor of the application? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Next up, we have a request for two spaces on uh, overnight parking um, at uh, 91 Westminster Avenue. Uh, Ray Goldstein. Hello. Hi. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. So, Hi, how's it going? Um, I've been living there for 25 years, and I only only bring that up because, for the most part, it's not been an issue at the at the site. But yeah. it was recommended that I come here. Uh, Steve McGilligan recommended I come and discuss this with you. Uh, the f have you received the, the photo of the house? Yes. Yeah. You see the situation. Yes. So there's a, that high wall. Um, and w for many, many years, it had been a, uh, a line on the road, which was the, sort of the border of the road. And we always take great care to go completely off that line. The line has since been worn away, so it's hard to see the border there. But um, we always get off the road completely and it's not been a, any, any kind of an issue as far as blocking the road. And uh, there's three flights of stairs up to where we live, so to put a subterranean garage or cut out there would be, it's pretty cost prohibitive. It's a fact it's impossible. So um, we're hoping, you know, the other strange thing there is that, the, you know, for the most part on that road, there, there's just a, a few segments of sidewalk on that side. The other side does have a bit more, but not completely all the way up Westminster. There's a, a segment, as you can see in the photo, that ends right before my, my road and then again uh, by, by my house, and then it stops. So again, we just try to get off into that part. So I don't think there's any obstruction. If, there was, if people were to walk, they wouldn't be walking there anyway because the sidewalk sort of ends. And um, when it snows, we do the same, get off the road completely, and we just uh, shovel out after what we've been plowed. You know, we get plowed in every time, we just shovel it out. And so, um, just looking for a possible, you know, we do have, I'd say there's the ability to, to park more than two cars, but it was recommended they only request two. I only have two cars in the house at the moment anyway, but we have a choice of three different areas in front of the wall. We'll just take up two of them at the moment. Thank you. Ms. Mahan, do you have comments? Um, just a few comments. Um, first, noting that we have from um, the Arlington Police Department, Officer Roteau, um, indicating that they do not support the request. Um, and I sort of, I'm trying to equate this with a like scenario um, in terms of where the parking is now and um, the possible proposal. I know when we went through the Forest Street reconstruction, one of the driving um, points, top three, top four, was that cars were parking, quote unquote, where the sidewalk was, but it was a similar sidewalk to what we mm -hmm. see here in the photo, um, and that's, one of the reasons when the road was being um, redesigned. And I do know that the residents up on 
Forest Street have the similar thing in terms of the brick wall, mm -hmm. and um, what they've done is install driveways. Officer Rateau notes that um, the, the cost of a project for a private landowner, landowner owner to put in a uh, private driveway is not one of the um, extenuating circumstances that we mitigate um, and consider in our deliberations. And then the other th um, point that he makes basically is if we take a public way, we could be setting a pre precedent that pri private parties can make improvements to part of a public way and then be granted um, exclusive parking privileges. And basically saying, setting this precedent, we could see this basically all over the town um, in a similar scenario. So I'd like to hear from my other two colleagues first before I make a motion. My, right now, I'm inclined to support the Arlington Police Department's recommendation. Mr. Dunn? So I'm, I'm trying to understand, uh, you mentioned it, but I didn't quite get it. What brought you here today? So very sporadically throughout the 25 years, I'll get a ticket. Yeah. And when I go to the police department, they say, well, if someone calls on the road for another car, and not saying it's mine, I have yeah. to ticket all the cars on the road. So it, it happened twice this winter, and it was, I think it was actually in pretty close proximity to mm -hmm. the two tickets. It didn't happen at all the whole rest of the winter, and it, hadn't, it actually hadn't happened in, in a bunch of years. To me, that's an indication that my car is not obstruct, obstructing the road in any way. But I, there are at times when people park literally on the road, and somebody calls, whether it's down the road, calls for it. And if that's the case, he says, we must ticket you. So I went to, to Mr. Gilligan, and he said, I'm going to let the ticket go. Go and, and apply for this, because I think it's valid. I think you should, you should do it. I don't, I don't see a, a problem here. And, but go through the process to, to, to validate it properly. Go through the proper channels. So that's why I'm here. Okay. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't don't we have a couple parking spaces on Forest Street that are essentially like this? Yes, but what we did was when we used the state funding, yeah, um, they built that temporary spot where the car could pull in, and there still is a sidewalk. Um, not um, not on the uphill side on Forest Street. Like if I'm driving towards Winchester right. on the right hand side. Some of those cars, okay. I think, are. Con I think of some of those space. And you were on the. I wasn't on the board for that. I'm not. Not that I wanted I to be on the board doing. for that part of that particular conversation. Yeah. So I, I, I generally agree with Officer Rateau. I'm a little bit. This one I, I'm more in favor of simply because they can get all the way off the road. And then once you can get off the road, I'm like. My other really strong concern mm -hmm. is the precedent that we're yeah. setting. Because if we that do it, it's got to, this can be replicated hundreds of times throughout the town and certain streets. So, I think the the difference, if I'm recalling correctly, Ms. Mahan knows this better better than I. Um, Forest Street did build in some off street parking spots, and permits were allocated to people, but they weren't allocated to a specific spot. If I'm not mistaken, I don't think people were told this is your spot your dedicated spot for a specific resident. And as I understand this request, this is for specific spots in front of your home, off-street parking spots. Just in front of the, my property, which is the wall. So if right. you, you, know, I, you know, as there's no demarcation, it's just where we've found areas to put our cars. Right. Uh, uh, I was, you know, uh, someone said to me, don't ask for three, because two is more reasonable. Is that grass strip actually your property, or is that? Um, is the what? Do you know if that is actually your property in front of the, the wall, or is that the, the public way? I, I don't I believe, know the answer. I believe so, yeah. I, I believe. If it was, it wouldn't have to ask our permission. Um, on, on to your point, um, Mr. Chairman, um, what we did was those spots, we told the residents during the day, anybody can park there. Mm -hmm. Then we asked them to apply for overnight parking. Right. Mm -hmm. So they could park there um, overnight, just, just to that point. Um, but I don't think they had specific spots that were assigned to each individual No, and they company. said yeah. if for some reason that spot had taken, you know, there were other options. But I think, But I think that shouldn't be an obstacle because we, at least we could construct that, this in that exact same way. Like, so I think, the, I think the, the question of precedent, I think, is a very solid one. And, uh, but I, I think that that particular concern, we can simply, we can really get, we can solve that one easy. And, and my only concern is if we say, okay, these yep. two public spots are dedicated to this resident. Right. Yeah, but I don't think we can, I don't think we have to do that. We could simply say, um, he's, uh, we could grant two overnight, permission for two overnights. 
and that like and do it exactly like John Force said. This must pay. Um, it's legal for them to do that because it's during the day, and therefore you know it's it, they're off. But if, at night, he would be the only one with a permit. I guess just from my years yeah. of service on this board, this is a really, I think, dangerous precedent yeah. that we're setting because you do for one. Yeah. Um, we already did it for Forest Street, though, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, but the, no, that was the state repaving it and working with the neighbors. Um, this is a re resident coming in, so. Um, can, I, can I say something? So what, my, my request is not so that I could then park on the street. I would still always get off the street because I think for that, I, I'm also concerned about, I have two children. I, we've always been concerned about that road anyway. There's yeah. been some speeding. It's a sensitive issue overall. So we also are very careful to get off the road so that there is the best way of navigating that road as well. You know, there's been some accidents. Mm -hmm. So I'm not planning on ever parking on the street. It would always be the same situation on that dirt park, getting completely off. When, if they ever repave it and they put that line in, as they, I'm sure they will, it will always be within the boundaries of that line. And, you know, the house is 100 years old this year, and it was built at a time when this was not even potentially an issue. So it's, it's, a, hard, it's a hard situation, I know, but... Yeah. I'm respectful of, uh, of the situation. I, I guess I would say the topography is not precluded from putting in a driveway. It would be costly, but we have told other people um, in the same circumstances that that's what they have to do. So I think I'm going to, my vote, depending on the motion, whoever wants to make it, I can make a motion, but I think people know which way I'm going. I think if there is no motion, I think it's just in limbo and it's not been granted, is my, my impression. I don't, I don't know that we even. I, I'm just very concerned, but I would like to, perhaps if there's any way um, we could refer this to the parking subcommittee, which two members of the board, including myself, sit on Officer Rateau, Mr. Gilligan, um, Mrs. Kropelka, and um, sometimes Mr. Olson, but perhaps it might now be Mr. Morse, um, to see, because uh, I haven't gone by recently and really looked at the area, look at the, the surrounding adjacent properties and or if there are any town properties where it's up by Mount Gilboa, although we had a conversation the other day on a different facet of Mount Gilboa, because um, I hate to just say no. Yeah, okay. I I'd would be willing to, oh, sorry, no, no. I would be willing to consider that uh, Partly because the, the referral apparently came from a member of that parking subcommittee, and, and uh, so I, I wouldn't mind having our board representatives with, with uh, the other members have the conversation um, and uh, come back to us with some reasoning about why the precedent should be broken in this case. God bless you. And, and along with that, what we've done in the past, just to, God bless you, um, stay with the same, any matter that's gone before the parking subcommittee we through the town manager and or through the chair um, just informed the police department that for the duration of this issue being um, studied that um, tickets won't be issued until we're resolved with this. So are you putting that in the form of a motion? Mm -hmm. Second. Okay, is there any further discussion on it? May I, make, may, may I make sure I understand the motion? The motion is to refer to the parking subcommittee for recommendation of the Board of Selectmen during the parking subcommittee's examination of the issue. Um, the police department will be requested not to issue any tickets. Sir. In front of, what's your address? 91. 91. Okay. Westminster Avenue. And then, and then what we'll do is um, you can check with the selectman's office, Mrs. Kropelka. She can let you know we post the meetings. They're open to the public. Um, you may want to come in and or if it's not a, a good time, send somebody else in or submit written testimony or anything or an email, um, whatever works with your schedule. We usually try to meet early in the morning so that people can, we can meet and then, um, and we usually don't have more than one to three agenda items. So it's not that you're sitting around a long time. Is it to my advantage to come? It helps and if you can't, yeah. um, and it, <laughs> if it's something that, you know, you need to really get out for work, you can be the first no, person. No, I'm glad to, to come. I think that's fine. Yeah, I, I, I think it's a good motion. If nothing else, it l helps me give more time because I'm really torn. Yeah. Okay. And then Sorry, I think so. on an issue like this, it would, it would benefit everybody if the full board would hear it. And, and the other two members had to leave. I'm not saying anything. Yeah, the subcommittee includes the person who referred you and the person who's recommending against, <laughs> as well as two members of the board. So I think it would be great to, to hash through the issues of, you know, precedence and what yeah, makes us different. One. So. Uh, okay, all those in favor of Ms. Mahan's motion, please say yes. 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 All opposed? It passes. So you, you have temporarily, temporary relief pending the well, further decision. Well, thanks for hearing me, and 
So I call Marie to get the schedule. Yeah. She'll write yeah. Me. yeah. Yeah. Either works. Yeah. Yeah. Thank Thanks. You. Uh, the next item on the agenda is a request for Punjab late night event. My understanding is that this um, was, table? was withdrawn. Oh, okay. Is there somebody here on that, on Punjab? Well, I have from the chairman. Oh, here. He left his <laughs> agenda. I took his because I couldn't find mine. My understanding is that it's been withdrawn. My, my understanding is it was withdrawn. Okay, so I spoke to the board administrator okay. today, and she said that it's been withdrawn. So um, okay. we dispense with that. Um, we also did take care of the uh, resolution already on town meeting uh, electronic voting. Oh, great. And so we move on to uh, correspondence received. Over seat. We have, uh, do I have a second on that? Second. We have under correspondence received, we have um, a letter from uh, Catherine Harani uh, of 19 Maple Street regarding maintenance of the town gardens. We have a letter from Cheryl Marceau of 10 Cleveland Street reg regarding heavy trucks on Cleveland Street. And we have a letter from uh, Ken uh, Koiman, the Disabled American Vets in the State House in Boston, regarding the uh, forced closure of bar lounge operations at Chapter 49. Um, do we have anyone here who wish to speak briefly to any of those, um, any of those letters? Please come to the mic. Hi, I'm Catherine Harani from 19 Maple Street, and basically right in the backyard here. And I do want to start by saying that the gardens are fantastic this time of year. <laughs> but I have noticed in the 25, 20 plus years we've been here that they're sort of slowly declining. And, you know, uh, but they especially took a beating this past summer, fall, when a big function tent was laid out and left in the heat of the summer at the Whittemore Robins ground and really did a lot of damage to the grass and it's not quite coming back. And then of course the library wall dumping ground that has not quite been cleaned up. And then some of the tree trimming kinds of things behind the doll and sculpture and reflecting pool. It just, and the fact that the properties haven't really had a spring cleaning yet. It just really, I just wanted to point out just, there's a lot of little things that, you know, I grumble about daily, but I, the big picture kinds of things have deteriorated beyond what I think is appropriate for such a special place. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, please, please come forward. Uh, thanks, Catherine. Uh, I'm Miriam Levine. I live on Academy Street. Uh, my husband, John Lane, also sent a letter regarding Robbins Park, but I don't, it doesn't seem to be on the agenda. However, uh, we're longtime residents of Arlington. Uh, we walk frequently in Robbins Park. We bring people there. And uh, in the last uh, 40 some odd years, uh, the deterioration of the park uh, uh, has occurred. And as Catherine said, there are many, many little things, but uh, it seems to be moving toward a tipping point. I would also say that the park, the buildings, are um, an, a gem. People come, uh, you know, from other areas to see it, to enjoy it. Um, watercolor classes come to paint it, and I would just, you know, trust that the selectmen and uh, Ms. Mahan, all of you, do all you can to uh, bring the park back, um, can't bring it back to what it was, but to do all you can to improve it and to maintain it. So thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else here to speak on any of these pieces oh, of correspondence? Wow. Oh, gee. Just, just briefly, because obviously we have that. Uh, I'm David Baldwin. Uh, I live on Academy Street also. Um, I've been enjoying the parks for the past uh, 55 years. Uh, I think that the parks are also would extend it to the old burying ground as part of the Arlington Civic Block. Um, a couple of weeks ago at the master plan uh, working group meeting, this became one of the big issues on how we have these gems but we don't often put the resources towards maintaining them in the long run. And um, one of the things that uh, was brought up about the reflecting pool and also about some of the vandalism that occurs in both uh, the st on the statue, the, the usual annual pulling the feather off and the, and the bow and things that happen inside the burying ground. One of the things that was discussed is the possibility of putting a, 
a closed circuit camera or something up there. Uh, but I think the bigger issue is that we need to endow and cultural resources of the town so that there's money to spend on them on an annual basis. Thank you. Right. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Could I just very briefly, um, I agree with, with the sentiments just from the microphone. I would love to say that we have a big pool of money um, in, in those uh, funds, but we don't. And just as a personal um, aside, just to let you all know, when the town meeting and this Board of Selectmen by a four to one vote was discussing the Community Preservation Act, yes. we were talking about, especially around parks and recreational facilities, as well as the town manager through the Capital Planning Committee had identified some projects that could make the list and or fall by the wayside, which not only um, spoke about the gardens and the park, but also the old burial, burial and grounds. So um, there, there, there are some minds afoot. I'm not saying that if the Community, Community Preservation Act doesn't go through, those things won't happen. But with the current confines of the budget that we have, and when we get to the operating budget out to 2020, um, unfortunately, there are things that are prioritized, and our parks and fields sort of get pushed down. So I'm not saying it's a caveat that that's going to happen, but I just wanted to bring that up. Thank you, Ms. Mahan. I think you said very well said. I think because the CPA, as we know, covers both outdoor recreation and historic resources. So, okay. Mr. Dunn. But, yeah. but I will say that when you use the word endowment, the only way endowment happens is through private effort. There's no, uh, the town is not ever. Uh, so uh, uh, yeah, I just, but I mean, I, I, hope, I hope that's inspiration for private effort because that's really the right way uh, to do it. Yeah. So I, I, all of this, oh, please, sir. Yeah. I'm uh, Shiri Shirani, the other half of <laughs> Um I hear what you said, and I, in fact, I expected that comment to be made tonight, but the town actually rents that property. Almost every weekend during the summer, there's a wedding party of some kind. So my question will be, why don't you allocate some of those funds to maintaining that property, which would be appropriate in my mind. Yeah. So just so that the funds for that property are retained in a specific um, revolving fund. And for instance, one of the things that the revolving fund was, wasn't specifically to maintain the park, but it did go towards replacing the clock up on the roof, which, so, which you may argue is too remote from the park, but I'd argue that they're quite proximate. So definitely that, that money is being used for the betterment of the properties but yeah. and we'll follow up yeah. on that yeah, yeah and might I suggest that um, you know we amend the motion to receive the correspondence to um, refer this uh, particular letter to the uh, town manager also for oh, I'll follow. accept that amendment yeah so I'd, I'd, I'd like to refer that one to the, I want to uh, town manager uh, trucks on Cleveland Street specifically there is uh, we, there's two aspects of this one in, in my mind. One is we could send it to TAC, and another one is we can send it to, uh, to town manager for additional enforcement. Um, I, I, def I think the additional enforcement element of it about the turns is uh, very appropriate, yeah. and whether or not we want to refer it to TAC, I, leave, I, I just wanted to at least discuss it with uh, the board. And for the DAV, I'm hoping that uh, the chair will see fit to put, in fact, I really think we have to put that alcohol license on our future agenda so that we can revoke it because the circumstances, or discuss it, and then I will, uh, the circumstances clearly have changed with that organization such that I'm not sure a license is appropriate anymore. So those are my, so I, I guess the one thing that I'm not sure about is whether or not we should talk to TAC with Cleveland Street. Uh, it doesn't hurt. Yeah, well, what I was going to say, just considering their request, could we first um, I think was sort of the avenue you were going down, explore through the chair with the town manager and the police department, because I know we had this, we've had this request before, Marathon Street, and I want to say Cleveland. Um, and then there's a separate issue of enforcement, and again, that can go through. Um, and then what I'm thinking is um, Officer Rateau may say within the past five, ten years, TAC okay. did look at this. And then if they didn't, it can come back to the selectmen. And so I'd say town manager, town manager, chair would be my referrals. Okay, we fine. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion does carry. Um, lastly, if we have uh, any new business, uh, Mr. Heim? You can wait. Ms. Mahan? No. Mr. Dunn? No. Nope. And I have no new business. Uh, with that, I'll entertain a motion to um, adjourn, understanding that, that the Board of Selectmen does remain in session during um, the, uh, the balance of town meeting uh, in the hall uh, so that we may attend to any uh, business that, that uh, we may be called town upon to, to act, town meeting business that we may be called so upon moved. to act. Do a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Yeah. I almost forgot I had to second that. <laughs>
No blue bin still. Oh, yeah. I know. I'm going to have to put in a request to get that back. I'm used to just going.